shall we wait uh, for two minutes? No, I think you can start. Maybe if I have to wait for five minutes. Uh, <clears throat> we'll wait for five minutes and start. <laughs> Shall we wait uh, for two minutes? No, I think you can start. Maybe if I have to wait for five minutes. Sangeeta, you are uh, muted. Please I unmute. We'll wait for five minutes and start. And her voice is low, I think. Sangeeta's voice is low. Shall we wait? Uh, Hello? Yeah, now it's fine. No, yeah. <laughs> Maybe if I have to wait for five minutes. Sangeeta, you are muted. Please unmute. We'll wait for five minutes. Yes. And her voice is low. Sangeeta's voice is low. Hello? Yeah, now it's fine. Maybe if I have to wait for five minutes. You are muted, please. And you will wait for five minutes. Or Namaste, sir. Jitur district, Parati, sir. APVVU. Ah, namaste. <clears throat> Bana, sir. Bana, Bana. Meeting started and they were on mute club at court. Good afternoon all. We're just waiting for just uh, two more minutes so that uh, you know uh, more participants can come. We'll just start by three five.
హలో హలో చెప్పండి నమస్తే సార్ నమస్తే good afternoon all uh, thank you all who joined this webinar uh, glyphosate ammonium in uh, india impact on work and health of women in agriculture uh yes, sir manavaran manavaran silent vetkonde evaru maatladadu morning emoddu idi webinar uh This webinar is organized by Pan India uh, along with National Alliance of Agriculture Allied Workers Union uh, to discuss the implications of glyphosate usage in India on women on and uh, their well-being. We are also releasing a new report titled Glyphosate Ammonia an overview authored by uh, Dr. Narasimha Reddy and uh, Dilip Kumar. uh today we are having our speakers uh dr sudha chepiala uh dr narsimha reddy uh, ms roshni satyan ms hira kurian uh, i'm really happy to welcome all our participants uh, to this webinar and uh, i would like to uh, invite uh, our uh, first uh, speaker for this evening um ms roshni satyan uh, she is a post graduate uh, sangeeta yeah. let, let me introduce more uh, yeah. sir please yeah welcome everyone uh, <clears throat> this is a webinar uh, being organized uh, in collaboration with uh, national alliance of uh, agriculture and allied workers union and uh, pesticide action network india so this webinar is uh, uh, is being organized in the context of uh, <clears throat> a report uh, which has been prepared by pan india on uh, glufosinate ammonium uh, this is a herbicide and uh, uh, this herbicide uh, has been analyzed in this report and uh, we are trying to bring out uh, Uh, information before uh, indian audience on uh, what kind of impacts uh, <clears throat> this uh, glufosinate uh, is likely to have on uh, uh, people environment and ecology uh, so the webinar uh, will be in english and bahut log to hindi mein bhi chahte hain lekin हमारा जो अभी बात करने वाले शायद दो तीन लोग तो हिंदी में बोल नहीं पाएंगे लेकिन कोशिश तो करेंगे थोड़ा बहुत हिंदी में बताने के लिए तर यदि तेलुगु इंग्लिश आखर के अटे मुख्यमंत्री विषया तेलुगुता అయితే ఈ వెబినార్ మొత్తం దేశవ్యాప్తంగా చూస్తున్నారు కనుక ఇది పూర్తిగా ఇంగ్లీష్ లోనే ఉంటుంది అయితే ఈ వెబినార్ స్ట్రక్చర్ ఇందాక సారీ సంగీత యాజ్ మెన్షన్ ద స్ట్రక్చర్ సో వీల్ స్టార్ట్ విత్ టూ ఆఫ్ అవర్ యంగ్ కొలీగ్స్ హూ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు యునో explain to us on uh, uh, you know the impacts of uh, herbicides uh, on uh, human health and then uh, we'll uh, uh, go to <clears throat> a doctor dr sudha who has been working on uh, you know glyphosate and uh, various other agrochemicals uh, she is also going to uh, help us in understanding the health implications and uh, finally i'll speak uh, and uh, i'll uh, uh, you know speak about the report uh, which we are bringing about and then we can have uh, discussions uh, <clears throat> based on these uh, presentations 
So meanwhile, uh, any of you have any doubts, you can uh, type that in the chat box and uh, that will be uh, picked up uh, uh, depending on the time and uh, the intensity of the question. So right now uh, I'll hand it over to Sangeeta to talk about what Pan India has been doing and uh, then I think uh, we'll begin the webinar. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, actually, uh, Dilip will be the right person to talk about Pan India because he's a person who uh, is working with Pan India from 2013. So I think uh, Dilip is uh, the best person to talk a few words about Pan India. Dilip, could you please? Thank you so much, uh, Sangeeta, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Pesticide Action Network India is a non-profit national organization. I started working in India since 2013. We have been doing documentation of pesticide-related issues, poisonings, community sufferings, and all across India. And we also do studies on uh, uh, pesticide use patterns, how it is uh, affecting uh, farm workers, farmers, and other uh, population, you know, the entire population, and also uh, the adverse effect on pesticides. So basically, we are a research advocacy organization, uh, basically looking at uh, bringing out more of uh, evidences related to pesticide use and its harm caused by pesticides onto the people, to the environment, uh, and all. We are also working on policy related issues as well to trying to bring out uh, uh, more of a policy related to. Uh, regulating pesticides in a way that uh, we wanted to see that pesticides are not at all uh, used or, or the at least the toxic pesticides are not used in India. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dilip, uh, for your words. Um, and uh, before starting the webinar, uh, I I want to give you a small uh, house rules which uh, we need to follow. Uh, the session uh, will be recorded and the live streamed uh, in YouTube uh, uh, channel of Pan India, Pesad Action Network India. Uh, and I request all of you to please uh, turn off your uh, videos and mute yourself uh, when you're not speaking. Uh, you can type your questions uh, in the chat box and it will be addressed um, after all the sessions. Uh, and if you want to talk something in the open forum, please uh, raise your hands and uh, definitely we'll be giving, giving you an opportunity uh, to you know uh, ask the questions to the speakers uh, and uh, first uh, I would like to call uh, Roshni uh, Roshni Satyan. Roshni is a research officer in Pesticide Action Network India. Uh, she's working with uh, Pan India for the last one year and uh, she's a, a postgraduate in uh, zoology uh, and she'll be giving a small session on herbicides and reproductive health uh, that is the topic of uh, her uh, session. Um, Roshni, please uh, share uh, your uh, presentation and uh, you can please start the session. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. please. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you, Sangeeta ma'am, for introducing me into this webinar. Uh, I will just share my screen. Um, can you see the slide? Yeah. Okay. Can you just start my bit now? Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm here to give a session on herbicides and their effects on reproductive health. So, actually, there's no need for me to talk about the significance of reproduction. So, it is the critical biological process for the survival of the species. So maintaining reproductive health is also important for physical, mental, and social well-being. So it is highly necessary for every individual to know and understand the potential toxicants that affect our reproductive health. So that itself is the purpose of today's session, to make you understand how herbicides affect reproductive health. So before moving on to the actual topic, I would like to 
give a brief idea about what are herbicides and how they enter into our body and cause different toxic effects. So herbicides are synthetic phytotoxic chemicals that are used to kill weeds or unwanted vegetation in a particular geographic area. So they are widely used in agricultural land, especially in monoculture system where uh, one type of crop is retained and all the other plants are removed. So they are used in agricultural land and landscaping. Next one is landscaping. So in landscaping, especially post-emergence herbicides are used to remove the weeds from outdoor spaces to modify or improve the appearance of gardens, parks, and recreational spaces. So they are also used in building premises, especially around industrial areas, schools, hospitals, and other construction sites. Herbicides are also used in forestry to remove or the, for the, or for the management of silvicultural weeds uh, in order to avoid their interference with a uh, desired forest species. In aquatic system, herbicides like 240, glyphosate, and simacin are used to control aquatic weeds like alligator weeds, uh, bulrush, etc. And they are also used to destroy the grasses growing along the uh, railway tracks and roads. So because of this same reason, uh, because of their broad range of applications, these herbicides are one of the highly consuming agrochemicals all around the world. And they are the largest pesticide product type, accounting for 47.6 percentage of global pesticide scale. So when we talk about their status in India, currently 87 herbicides are registered in our country as per the Insecticide Act of 1968. Now let's talk about some toxic facts of herbicides. So one thing we all should know about herbicides is that they are really toxic herbicides, I mean chemicals. They're really toxic chemicals. So there are actually many myths regarding these herbicides, like they are only toxic to plants, and they are safe for other organisms. That's why we don't have to, uh, we don't need any protection while handling them. But that's not true. So herbicides are capable of causing many adverse effects on living organisms like inhibitory effects, disruptive effects, interruptive effects, and like that. So mainly the two factors that affect the toxicity of a herbicide includes their chemical groups present in the active ingredient and the persistence of a herbicide. So these chemical groups actually determine the activity and selectivity of herbicide and the persistence. It is a duration in which a herbicide remains in a treated area. So this in turn is influenced by chemical groups present in them. So accordingly, herbicides are classified as low persistent herbicides, moderately persistent herbicides, and highly persistent herbicides. So higher the persistence, higher will be the risk for contamination. The next one is, since they can induce potential acute and chronic toxicity in animals, according to WHO classification based on acute toxicity, global, <clears throat> globally harmonized system, and their listing in uh, agreements or conventions, Many herbicides or many pesticides are grouped as highly hazardous pesticides. So, among the 87 registered herbicides in India, 20 herbicides are actually highly hazardous pesticides as per Pan International. Another shocking fact about herbicides is their ability to bioaccumulate in living organisms and to induce biomagnification. So, herbicides can bioaccumulate or they can build up in the tissues of living organisms. And there are many studies that demonstrate the bioaccumulation of these herbicides in fishes, molluscans, and other terrestrial invertebrates like earthworms. So this is a shocking fact that this can lead to biomagnification or enrichment of these chemicals in each tropic level. That means if a fish is contaminated with herbicides, the person consuming 
this fish will also get accumulated by this chemicals so it's actually a very toxic effect of a herbicide now these chemicals are able to cause various acute and chronic toxic effects in organisms so acute toxic symptoms of herbicides commonly include eye irritation skin irritation respiratory tract irritations convulsions blurred vision difficulty in breathing nausea burning sensation vomiting and even paralysis chronic effects include neurotoxic effects or neurodegenerative disorders uh, respiratory toxic effects endocrine toxic effects carcinogenic effects and genotoxic effects in human beings okay so now let's discuss how do these herbicides enter into our bodies so it can enter into our body through major three ways that are oral exposure they can enter into our body through oral exposure inhalational exposure and dermal exposure so oral exposure occurs when a person ingest or intake a herbicide contaminated food or water so it can occur when a person consume food without proper hygiene after herbicide application or drinking water in the middle of herbicide application other than this storing herbicide containers in kitchen or near consumables uh, or improper cleaning of vegetables collected from herbicide applied fields can also increase the risk of oral exposure okay. next is inhalational exposure so it can occur when a person inhales herbicide contaminated air so it can occur it can happen when a farmer doesn't use appropriate pp or respirators while applying herbicides as instructed in labels other than this keeping herbicides inside the house can also increase the risk of inhalational exposure uh, entering into the treated field without proper protection can also increase the risk of herbicide exposure the last one is dermal exposure so it can occur when uh, we apply pesticides without the without wearing this personal protective equipment so these pesticides or these herbicides can enter into our body through our skin other than this clothes made up of cotton and other penetrable materials can also lead to wetting of these garments by the droplets of these herbicides uh, other than this spilling of herbicides during preparing applying or cleaning the containers can also lead to dermal exposure so these are the three major ways how these herbicides enter into our bodies okay now let's move to our actual topic that is reproductive toxicity so reproductive toxicity refers to the adverse effects of a chemical substance on reproductive organ sexual function and fertility in males and females and it also includes the developmental toxicity that is produced in the offspring ovarian dysfunction reduced fertility low sperm concentration stillbirths and changes in menstruation patterns are general reproductive effects induced by hazardous chemicals including herbicides okay so among the 87 registered herbicides in india 15 are considered reproductive toxicants and they include 240 clomazone flumosacin fluoroxypermeptyl glyphosate glufosinate ammonium like that the 15 reproductive toxicants okay now let's discuss the mechanism of reproductive toxicity so this herbicide induces reproductive toxicity through four major mechanisms they are through endocrine disruption teratogenicity cytotoxicity and carcinogenicity now we will explain it one by one first one is reproductive toxicity through endocrine disruption okay so endocrine disruptors are the chemicals that can alter the function of endocrine system so herbicides acting as endocrine disruptors are mostly anti androgenic or anti estrogenic that means they can inhibit the activity of androgens and estrogens respectively so they majorly act in two ways either they uh, interact directly with the hormone receptors and inhibit the formation of hormone receptor complex 
or they indirectly alter the number of this hormone receptor sites or by modifying this hormone. So here are some examples of herbicides which induce reproductive toxicity through endocrine system. The first one is pendimethalin. The first one is pendimethalin. So when steroids were exposed to this herbicide, increased plasma vitlogenin levels and gonadal aromatase activity were observed in them. So increased levels of plasma vitlogenin is actually an indication for the estrogenicity of pendimethalin. That means it can mimic the activity of estrogen. Like this gonadal aromatase activity in this steroids actually indicates the ability of pendimethalin to cause hyperestrogenism or elevated levels of estrogen. This can lead to hyperfeminization in females and phenotypical feminization in males. Likewise, glyphosate and glyphosate-based herbicides are known to modulate the estrogen receptors and molecules in estrogenic pathways. So in a study, some researchers administered animals with soy milk supplemented with glyphosate and they could observe reduced levels of testosterone, cetolicyl number, abnormalities in sperm morphology and epididymal tail mass and also degenerations in cetolic cells were also observed. A similar, similarly, glucosinate ammonium, when lizards were exposed to glucosinate ammonium, alterations in plasma sex hormone levels were observed. So these are few examples. There are many other studies that show the endocrine disruption, but these are few among them. So next one is teratogenicity. Next mechanism is teratogenicity. So when exposed to certain chemicals, it can lead to the occurrence of structural malformations during fetal development, leading to the growth retardation malformations in the offspring. So this is called teratogenicity and all the chemicals or substances which induce this kind of developmental effects are called teratogen. So a teratogenicity can occur when females are exposed to herbicides during their pregnancy. Either uh, these herbicides will uh, cross the placental barrier and enter into the fetal circulation and cause developmental effects or they can alter the synthesis of essential nutrients without crossing the barrier. So here are some, we have two examples of herbicides that induce teratogenicity. The first one is glucosinate ammonia. When pregnant rats were exposed to glucosinate ammonia, the uh, abnormalities in their embryos were reported with damage to neural tubes and brain. Other than this, intrauterine death, premature deliveries, increased pre and post implantation losses were also observed in this study. Similar effects were shown by glyphosate and paraffin. When sister rats were exposed to this herbicide, skeletal alteration, mortality, and retardation is observed in fetuses. Okay. Third mechanism is the cytotoxicity of herbicides. Okay. So herbicides called repro uh, cause reproductive cytotoxicity through the degeneration and alteration the reproductive system associated cells. Okay. So when human umbilical vein endothelial cells were treated with pendimethalin, increased cell death and abnormal protein expression was noted. Similarly, when striped dolly rats were exposed to paraquet, reduction in their reproductive organ weight and cell degeneration and epithelial shedding was also reported when these rats were exposed to this herbicide. Uh, when male lizards were exposed to glucosinate ammonium, oxidative damage and lesions were observed in testing. So this is a few examples for uh, the herbicides which induce cytotoxicity and causing reproductive toxins. And the last
Hello. <coughs> so, where is the disruption? Sangeeta? Uh, it, it seems uh, the connectivity is a bit bad there. Okay. So, meanwhile, uh, Sudagaru, can you briefly explain in Telugu because we have many uh, participants uh, from Telugu states working with agriculture workers? Sure, sure, sure. While uh, she's logging in, uh, I'll talk in Telugu. Andriki uh, Namaskaram, my Dr. Sudha. I could have pesticides, Gurinchi, Vatiki, Vativalla, Jarge, Nastam, Gurinchi, Matlar Kutnamu, Miku Everkena, particular Telgulo, Matlada Lanunte, last to key, and the Matladuchu, Mikuna doubt Lani, Anami Ikada e platform either discuss Chayuchu. Akadavar in the Sepu Chaptundi entente Asalu herbicides and ANTV, pesticides and ANTV, herbicides valla, elanti, hani karamu, autundi anedi, in the varaku chepkunamu, in the varaku chepunaru. Kalpomandu. Kalpomandu. Okay, so Daniki Irendu Mandula valla, Daniki theda anti, Danivala oce, lava me, telskuntunamu, manamu, vera de ganchi, but Dan Gurinchoche, Nashtamu, Chala mandiga, Chala mandi, kiteliat ledu. Tells code and it could a chala taku sources on night, tara taku information, miku andutundi. So Idanta, Doctor Edigaru Chesna, Ida Idi Krushi entente, Ila, Manamu, Manaku, use Chandi, Vardendi, Kalpamandu, Vardendi, and Chapukuntu Namu, Manam Yala, Manapantani, Yala Kapad Kuali, Manapantaku, you know, Utpatilo Kani, than Petubalo Kani, Lepote, thaniki Pantalo. Unde quality gani yedena manam matlar kuntuna taite, dan gurincha matlar tunarakani, dantlo oche rakarakala, dantlo oche dose ju, daniki alanir tunarakani, danto oche nastal, danto patu oche nastalu, ekuga, yavuru, mundukura avat ledu, danakuch matla daniki, nenoka doctor ni, daniki nenu e dini valla, e mandalumi, manamandramu. Ye Pantaina Pandichetamla, Kuragal Gani, Bia Vadlukani, Ye Pantaina Pandichanlo, Ivumanaku Thor Pad Pautunai and Chapkochu, Kani, Mana use chase to Napudu, Mana use chase a Rakamu, Mana use chase a Mana Vadakamu Chedam Valla, Manaku, Yeni Rakaluga, Rogalu, Manadi Manaku, Ustunai and Chapakodamu, the Gurunchi Matlad Kodame, the Nyoka. Dinyoka to Iva Irojoka, Pratinatan Chapakochu. So Ipada Varaku Ipudu Nenu na na experience a chaptanu Neni inni Rosulu Oka Rendevela Tomidanunchi E topic me the Nenu Chala de Geriga na patient laki na na hospital locani Nenu Panchesi hospital locani Ila Raitulu Eko Garanga. In America, lo panchesano. Akkar kuda mag raithulu achche val. Antheta raithulu untar. Raithulu ane idhle ekunda yeh de samu onda du. So, Sudagaru. Sudagaru. Ah, well, at a me presentation we will have it in English and Telugu. Ah, I just wanted. Sir, when the presentation start che sir, rendu. Ah, rendu che sir, si che da onta mana presentation start che sir. I thought as he as he joined as Sangeeta. <coughs> yeah, yeah, she's back. She's back. Okay, let okay. her finish. Uh, maybe let her continue uh, because. Uh, <coughs> um, sir, the screen sharing yes. is disabled. No problem. Then you finish that talk. Then. No, no, she is uh, screen. Our screen. It is, yeah, it is. It is oh, enabled. Yeah, okay. Just enabled it, please. Roshni, it is already enabled. Can you quickly complete Roshni? Yes, sir. Here. Yeah. Uh, so we were talking about the carcinogenicity and reproductive toxicity. 
so if you look at the studies linking carcinogenicity and reproductive toxicity of herbicides we can see that majority of these pesticides induce mammary gland tumors so here are some few examples atrazine paraquat and diuron are capable of inducing mammary gland uh, mammary tumors and induce reproductive toxicity so when we talk about the reproductive effects of these herbicides in human they can induce trans i mean they can cause transplacental transfer especially uh, herbicides like glyphosate and diuron and can cause endocrine disruption uh, and breast cancer and cytotoxicity in human so it is actually difficult to obtain a detailed information <clears throat> regarding the effects of herbicides on the reproductive system of humans so we are currently relying on animal data for assessing the risk of herbicides so as we have discussed herbicides are really hazardous to living things so we just discussed the reproductive toxicity of herbicides other than this they can also cause neurotoxic effects genotoxic effects and carcinogenic effects in living things so herbicides must be prohibited in order to avoid their hazardous effects on animals and environment so i'm winding my session here thank you Thank you so much, Roshni, for the session. Uh, thank you, Sudha, Dr. Sudha, uh, for uh, doing a translation for uh, Telugu people. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, now uh, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Hira Kuryan. Uh, she'll be giving a small session on uh, social implications of reproductive toxicity on women. Uh, Hira is. Uh, Uh, postgraduate in zoology uh, she is working with the panel for the last one year and uh, she is mostly interested in highly hazardous pesticides so uh, i invite uh, hira to be an to her presentation hira please share your screen and you can start your presentation good afternoon everyone and thank you ma'am for the introduction So today I will be discussing about the social implications of reproduction, reproductive toxicity of women. The ground for this session is that women are the most vulnerable um, in the society, vulnerable section in the society who suffer almost all the implications of the pesticide use, and hence we have to address this issue. Reproductive toxicity, as defined. by the united nations economic committee for environment states that reproductive toxicity for any chemical is a toxicity that would interfere with the reproductive ability or capacity with subsequent effects on lactation and the development of the offspring there are many scientific evidences to state that women are the most susceptible to toxicities from pesticide this is because women are the child bearers and they have a higher abundance of hormone sensitive tissues women also have a higher proportion of fat compared to men so the fat loving pesticides like the lipophilic ones like atrazine can easily or readily dissolve in this fat and also fat soluble pesticides are found to reside in the body of a woman longer than that of a man apart from this we can see that women are the most affected by the economic policies privatization of community resources and other discriminating grounds of economic agenda driven by corporates moving on to the statistics in agriculture if you have if you have to look at the statistics in agriculture we can see that around 50% of the agricultural labor force in asia is constituted by women according to the international fund for agricultural development when it comes to india we can see that 75% of all the full time workers in indian farms are women however only one third or the one third of these female workers in india are unpaid laborers because they work on the family farms owned by their parents husbands or in laws 
and there is a considerable wage discrimination between men and women where the concentration of the gender wage disparity is up to 75 percentage in many indian states and another interesting fact to be noted is that although women have a higher participation in agriculture it is to note that indian women only owns 13.9 percentage of this country's land according to 2015 census an FAO report of 2011 has also summed up that the national average time spent by a woman in India in agriculture is 32%. And another striking thing said by FAO in 2013 is that in Indian Himalayas, a pair of bulls work up to 1,064 hours in a year in a hectare farm while an Indian woman works for about 3,485 hours. So this is a clear depiction. Hello. Yes, Hira, please continue your audible. Okay, sorry, sorry for that. So as I have said earlier, this is a clear depiction of the exploitation of women labor in rural India. If we are to look at the social restraints imposed on women, we can see that women farmers have less representation in the society and they are the most unwelcomed in farmers' organization. And they also suffer more than men from the lack of sanitary facilities in the fields. And besides this farming, women in rural areas have to raise livestock, do house chores, even work at other houses to augment the income they get from the farming. They also do child rearing and they take care of take care of elderly and this is restricting their mobility and access to other outside resources and women are also not involved in the direct trade of agriculture produce so there is a clear-cut occupational segregation of women into low technology jobs so this is preventing women from getting new skills and capabilities which is complicating the already existing illiteracy and lastly we can see that Women are the ones who eat the last or the leftovers and in least quantity, and they face the malnutrition and there is an increased vulnerability to insecticide toxicities. Studies have shown that low dietary intake of protein enhances the vulnerability to organophosphate toxicities. Now we will discuss about the reproductive effects in women by pesticide use. As have already stated, exposure to pesticide in women can result in decreased fertility rates, stillbirth, premature birth, low birth weight, spontaneous abortion, developmental problems, and multiple ovarian disorders. Pesticide exposure can also increase the time to conceive or the time to pregnancy. A study have reported that women who, are, who got exposed to pesticide experienced longer menstrual periods and they have an increased frequency of missed periods. So they experience oligomenaria, which is the infrequent periods, or amenaria, which is no periods at all. Even when women are not directly involved in strain, studies have shown that spouses of these male pesticide applicators have a higher incidence of miscarriage, spontaneous abortions, and stillbirths in some studies. We can also see that most pesticides we use are mammary carcinogens, leading to breast cancer, which is the second most uh, abundant type of cancer after lung cancer. Herbicides and women. We can see that most of the herbs we had in our farm in the past are now lost due to these herbicide applications. These ones, which are classified now as weeds, had definite functions and biological significance. Some of these herbs were to attract beneficial insects like wasps, flies, and predatory beetles, which are natural enemies to the pest. Here, they serve as an alternate host and provide shelter for these pests and pathogens. Some of these herbs, or the weeds, as we say today, are consumable and they are used for medicinal purposes, and others can be used as a distraction for insect pests. So the notion that all weeds are inauspicious to agriculture is definitely a fallacy. Today, this knowledge is lost. 
The rural women who have handled these herbs as foods for century have lost this wisdom with the advent of herbicides. These herbicides are also applied as general ones, so they are not targeted to a particular crop, and this application is now killing the non-cultivated crops. These are some of the common herbs we see today, in which the spiny amaranth, amla, bremmi, etc. are edible herbs, while the lamb cotters have anti-helminthic, anti-logistic, and anti-rheumatic properties. It has that properties. And one of the most common herb called tickweed is a digestive stimulant. Now we will discuss about the social implications of the earlier mentioned reproductive toxic effects. We know that women are employed in skilled agricultural activities. These activities include seed production, weeding, and artificial pollination. Why women are selected for this is because the nature of the delicate work and the time and patience this work requires. So now we know that larger the size of this land holding, more time a woman has to spend on the farm. So once again, there is a shortage of time for the woman to do the house chores and even dedicate their time to the children. And again, women are blamed for this situation. Women also pick vegetables they harvest pesticide doused crops. They even apply the pre-harvest desiccant herbicides and are involved in cooking of these pesticide laden foods. And women also wash out the containers, the pesticide bottles and containers, and they wash the cloth, pesticide soaked cloth of theirs and their spouses, and even store the pesticide bottles at home. So the thing is, in all these conditions, women are more and more exposed to these pesticides, including herbicides and they remain clueless about the implications of these pesticides on them and their family. This is another factor that contributes to their social tormenting because their ignorance and cluelessness is considered as an irresponsible act from the woman's part. <coughs> Certain studies have shown that pesticide exposure can induce precocious puberty or earlier menarche in women. So this is a risk factor for endocrine-related diseases. The onset of puberty can mark the end of childhood and the beginning of adult responsibilities in many parts of rural India. So the thing is, many girls are forced to shoulder these larger responsibilities. And studies have shown that most women are not psychologically prepared to accept such drastic changes. Studies from Karnataka have shown that girls drop out of school once she reaches Menarch. This is considered as a visible preservation of a girl's sexual purity. One of the key reproductive issues faced by women of rural India is infertility. And many studies have shown that there is a great social stigma attached to childless women in Indian society. Infertility study from Andhra Pradesh, India reported that Approximately 70% of the women who experience infertility are punished for their failure to conceive. And 20% of these women reported that their husbands used severe violence as a result of their childlessness. And we can also see that women face the blame and social consequences for this. And they suffer personal grief, frustration, economic deprivation, ostracism, violence, and marital disruption like divorce. The main reason for this is that in developing countries, motherhood is the only way for a woman to enhance their status within the family and community. Studies have also shown that physical and psychological stress faced by these working women further decreases their chance of conception and affect most of the women attending the infertility clinics. We can see that agriculture works of women are more manual, tedious, and labor intensive. Here, most equipments are designed for men's physics with the result that they are often too heavy for women to handle comfortably. So again, women are criticized for not doing heavy work like loading and fluffing similar to men. And if you look at this case, we can see that more work during pregnancy can cause problems which affect the postpartum health. 
who are fostered during pregnancy, working with heavy machinery, high physical effort, mental stress, and general environmental stress can affect the health of the fetus as well as the mother. So when women are exposed to these pesticides, their fetuses are also exposed to transplacental transfer or through breastfeeding. So now the child or the fetus suffer from neurodevelopmental disorders, mental disorders, and locomotor dysfunctions. And the social implication of this problem is that children who are affected by such conditions are considered the sole responsibility of the mother. So now the mother experiences a role overload, role strain, and role conflict in discharging many responsibilities. She now has to take the role of a nurse, a teacher, a caregiver for such a disabled child. And lastly, women tend not to discuss their reproductive disorders with anyone and they don't seek medical help. This is mainly because of the social stigma attached to it and the taboo in our Indian society. So these disorders are poorly diagnosed and are rarely treated. This results in severe medical complications in their later stages. So all the social implications and the pesticide toxicities are deteriorating the status of women agriculturalists in the society. So this problem needs to be addressed and rectified because the prosperity of any nation depends upon the progressiveness of this woman. Thank you. Thank you, Hira, uh, for that nice presentation. And now, uh, the key speaker of uh, today, um, Dr. Sitha Jitiyama, uh, she'll, be doing, she'll be presenting a session on glyphosate and in India, impact on work and health of women agriculturists. Uh, because of that, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Sitha. Uh, Dr. Sitha Jitiyama, who completed her uh, MBBS and MD. Uh, she's an American board certified physician uh, from Baylor College of Medicine, Houston, Texas, US. Uh, she's currently pra practicing in US and in India as uh, interactive medicine physician with the uh, goals of preventive regeneration and functional medicine. Uh, in addition to her practice, her topic of interest, research, and presentations are GMOs and its dangers to your health and environment. Uh, male and female hormone imbalances, uh, nutritional imbalances in chronic diseases, uh, gut uh, microbiome imbalances, inflammation and immune functions, uh, environmental toxins, uh, nutrigenomics, epigenetics, DNA methylation, sustained epigenetic change, etc. Et 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 so we are really uh, honored that uh, you are here uh, to do a small presentation. Uh, that's what the, the floor is yours. You can just, you're already shared your presentation. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank you for the introduction. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Reddy for giving me this opportunity. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, yes please proceed. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to see. Okay. So I am Dr. Sudha. I am practicing physician. So Nenu, I'll I'll try to do all three languages together and see what I can do. Okay, uh, I'm a currently practicing physician. Nenu, you put practicing physician doctor ni. Correct ka patients choose thunta nu. Chala mandi overall uh, in India as well as in America. Kora patients choose thunta nu. So my work started in 2008, where eight nine where. I had to look at what is this environmental toxins. So from 2008, uh, I had some couple of patients who were uh, agriculturists. They were farmers. Agricultural farmers came to the hospital, came, came to the hospital to get it checked. So I said, okay. And then we, I was working in the hospital in a government hospital in America. Uh, that time, I kind of, we had 20-year-old, 30-year-old agriculture farmers. 20, 30 year old farmers coming to the hospital. Uh, they were like from Mexico and then they came to America for living and then they had to come to government hospitals. I will talk very slow in English so that everybody understands as well as the other language. So they were working in, I was working in government hospital and they get a government hospital is free care. 
so they don't have insurance or anything like that so they come to get free health care in a government hospital so i was working at that time and 2008 doing rotations and 20 30 year old came with kidney damage now by everything i think andar ki tells what is uh, sabko malum hai kidney damage kya hota hai so kidney damage hai sabko malum hai ki creatinine jo hai wo wo bahut you know marker hai wo kidney damage karne ke liye to kidney damage anagane mana creatinine ane gurtu vastundi andar ki telisindi so that kidney damage we say check in creatinine the creatinine was 20 almost 30 normal normal it is 0.9 less than 1 लेस देन वन रखना चाहिए किडनी फंक्शन के लिए हम सब लोग भी टेक्स कर सकते हैं हमारा किडनी फंक्शन क्या है बोलना तो आपको किसी डॉक्टर के भी पूछ सकते हैं कि बोलना कि लेस देन वन होना चाहिए बट अभी दैट तब तक तो ट्वेंटी था दैट इट वाज लाइक इट वाज लाइक अ शॉकिंग फॉर एज यू नो यंग डॉक्टर्स एट दैट टाइम से ट्वेंटी हाउ कैन किडनी फंक्शन ट्वेंटी एंड ही इज एब्सोलूटली फाइन वो बंदा तो ठीक था हॉस्पिटल में खाना खा रहा था सब कुछ ठीक था बट बस एक ही कंप्लेंट था उसका यूरिन नहीं जा रहे जा पा रहा था तो पेट में पूरा हेवी हो रहा था और यूरिन नहीं जा पा रहा था तो यूरिन नहीं जा पा रहा था और बस सब कुछ ठीक था वॉकिंग टॉकिंग एवरीथिंग वाज नॉर्मल एंड दैट टाइम वी लिटरली हाउ केन किडनी एट अ ट्वेंटी ईयर ओल्ड डैमेज कैन बी ट्वेंटी क्रियाटने दैट वॉज अ वेरी शॉकिंग फॉर मी एज अ training doctor pg post graduation i was not working i was doing my post graduation at that time in 2006 7 so i uh, okay, then we have to kind of see we when then humko history lena tha uda tab tab history lena tha kya hai kahan kya hai kya kar raha tha kya kaam kar raha tha uh, you know uh, again i'll talk in telugu from where he has come kidney damage aipoyindi ekka nunchi vachadu em chestunadu background enti Uh, what was the background of that person what was he eating what was his thing so according to the history he was a plain farm he was like farmer working uh, full time agriculture and was using law, was 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 taking care of farming so when we have to take up the history farming 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 and then okay farming so what else what else is like nothing i'm an agriculturist i don't know so that's where we have to dig into everything of saying that okay what are the farmers doing what are the agriculturals are doing agricultural people are doing that it causing kidney damage so that was the first time ever that i started looking into this environmental toxins so my slide here tells about environmental toxins does this have any effect on any organs including obesity obesity matlab you know la la undadu obesity weight gain uh, food sensitivity dysbiosis endocrine hormonal imbalances immune system regulation autoimmunity cancer and uh, cancer infections and all allergies and inkoka the rogam inkoka disease ekkuga peyaledi appudu america lo appudu 2000s lo entante autism so autism anedi kottaga vinapadeyadu appudu 2000 lo ippudu ante andaram autism anedi chaala ekkuga chustunnamu sapam sukko malume kya autism e abhi abhi sir 2000s तब तक ऑलरेडी था अमेरिका में ऑटिज्म बट वी डिड नॉट नो मी पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स इन आर मेडिकल कॉलेज में चलो चलो वी डिड नॉट नो वॉट वॉज ऑटिज्म वी डिड नॉट नो वॉट वॉज ऑटिज्म बट वेन वी वेन टू आर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन देर वॉज ऑटिज्म देर वॉज ओबेसिटी देर वॉज एवरी सो ऑल दिस कैंड ऑफ थिंग वॉज लाइक कैंड ऑफ आस्किंग ओके वॉट वी लर्न इट वॉज डिफरेंट एंड वॉट इज नाउ इट वॉज डिफरेंट सो दैट वॉज वेर आई स्टार्टेड माई जर्नी and this is what we were seeing in all america everything was happening so we had to look into the other section of what our textbooks have taught us so that is where i started in they saying that looking at toxic environmental substances that has been rain since 1980 and which the same time the comorbidities are also increasing from the from the from 1980s and 90s and especially in the 2000s so uh, that kidney failure was a main thing uh in agricultural workers as i discussed then we said what was the what was the main ingredient i don't know usme kya hai agricultural people mein kya hai ki wo usme kya hai ki usko kya mil raha tha ki toxin hai ya pesticides hai herbicides hai there was only pesticide at that time okay they were using some chemical so we were saying okay they were using some chemical so what is that chemical so we are like okay can you show me the chemical can you tell me the name of the chemical and when i was saying that chemical name and all that they were not able to 
say the chemical name, but they showed me some pictures and all that. And then in that pictures, there was something called glyphosate. So I said, okay, what is glyphosate and what is that? And that's where we started our experimentation and journey and papers and everything. That's where we started. So workers in sugarcane fields in Central America and in India were dying of young age and records of kidney failure. And that kidney failure, again, there was too much arsenic exposure from drinking water. And there was too much Tylenol also. Tylenol and paracetamol. Ante, uh, the Indian brand is Dolo 650, paracetamol. Uh, uh, fever hota hai, humko kya lenge? Dolo 650. So then we were saying, okay, they may be taking too many uh, paracetamol. So we were like, they are taking too many painkillers and they were taking too many painkillers uh, because of pain or because of tired, because of fever. The Tylenol is paracetamol, paracetamol and Dolo 650 or Dolo, I don't want to brain them. The medicine is uh, paracetamol. Paracetamol is causing liver damage. But what happened was glyphosate was interfering with this enzyme and Tylenol was also interfering with the enzyme, causing Tylenol toxicity, causing kidney damage. That was the initial understanding for us that Tylenol or painkillers were kidney damage. All of 2000, we said, oh, they are using the too much painkillers. That's why the kidney damage. Till today, in all over India, you go to any renal specialist, they will say too much of uh, pain medications. That's why they are causing kidney damage. This is the main thing. The doctors, we are not aware. हमको पता नहीं है कि ऐसा कुछ भी होता है दूसरा फील्ड में जो बिना जो अदर मेडिसिंस लेने से पहले ही जो बिना लेने से पहले ही हमको जोड़ा किडनी डैमेज हो सकता है अभी तक हम डॉक्टर्स को पता नहीं है क्योंकि हमको एक्सपोजर नहीं था वो स्टडी नहीं था हमको टीचिंग ने नहीं किया हुआ बट दे 90s 2000 में बहुत बहुत भयंकर से फ्लेयर अप हो गया तो ये है so, this is experiment tha, round up ka, karke wo glyphosate mil raha tha, and then glyphosate was environmental toxin tha, wo jo kidney damage kar raha tha. Isiliye, humne isme baat acha dhyan dene lagi hu. Sabse, I've been looking into it very seriously. Why and what experiment, scientific based evidences, and uh, a serious effect of kidney damage, and so that we can prevent it. Treatment ke liye to aapko dialysis hi karna padta hai. Aur kuch nahi hai kidney damage ka. Abhi sab kuch malum hai. अभी 2022 में हम ओके सबको मालूम है अगर किडनी डैमेज हो गया आज तो कुछ नहीं कर सकते हैं किसी के डॉक्टर पे कि कौन से भी हॉस्पिटल जाओ कौन से भी बड़ा हॉस्पिटल में जाओ छोटा हॉस्पिटल में जाओ या कौन से देश में भी जाओ इट्स ओनली डायलिसिस इज द ओनली ट्रीटमेंट एवरीबॉडी नोज इट एंड वी आर वेरी क्लियर अबाउट इट बट व्हाई वी आर नॉट थिंकिंग इट अदर देन ओके व्हाट इज व्हाई व्हाई दिस केमिकल व्हाट इज हैपनिंग व्हाई किडनी इज डैमेजिंग we medical doctors are also not aware. Humko pata nahi hai. Humko pata nahi hai kya cheez chal raha hai bale. Toh we are not aware. We are not, we, we don't know what is happening. We don't know. So that's where we are into education and awareness into why this thing. So this is a puzzling thing and why autism, autism karke bhi, uh, aisa kuch connection hai kya? Karke hum papers karne lage. Aisa kuch connection hai kya? Ide wana autism ki kani, he chemicals, environmental toxin ki connection hai wana unda. This is the question. हमको पूछना चाहिए, हमको awareness में पूछना चाहिए, ऐसा कुछ chemicals exposure and environmental toxin में हमको health related ऐसा कुछ है क्या? बस मुझे आप सबको यही विनती है कि पूछो, question पूछो, ऐसा कुछ है क्या? ऐसा कुछ side effect हो सकता है क्या? ऐसा कुछ हो सकता है क्या? इला एमना इवाला अंदर की छपको दल स्क्रीमेंटे Adagandi, tails kondi, mere use chese chemicals kani, herbicides kani, fungicides kani, pesticides kani, idi e manna mana koi enta varako haani jarga chhu, na haan nen use chese te enta varako haani jarga chani, adagandi, adagandi yane chaptu na. Enda gante inni roga lunnai, ivanni roga lunnai, ye itna sara cheez hai, hum environmental toxins se directly related hai. हमारा पेपर्स है ऑलरेडी पब्लिश्ड है हमको और एक्सपेरिमेंट करने के लिए और भी एक्सपेरिमेंट्स हो रहा है ऑल भी स्टडीज हो रहा है और बहुत सारा चीजेस हो रहा है वर्ल्ड में हो रहा है बट इट इज द टाइम दैट यू ऑल आस्क दिस वन क्वेश्चन डू वी नीड टू लुक इनटू दिस एनवायरमेंटल टॉक्सिन एज अ बिग हेल्थ हजार्ड आप सबको पूछना बहुत जरूरी है हम सबको पूछना बहुत जरूरी है डॉक्टर लोगों को ये सब सबको सब पेशेंट को जब देखते हैं 
ये आपको हम पूछना बहुत जरूर है कि आप ये यूज कर रहे क्या क्योंकि हमको पता नहीं है क्योंकि हम ये चीजें बहुत सारे चीजें हम देख रहे हैं सो so, आप सबको ये बोल रहा हूँ कि ये हो सकता है यस इट कैन बी पॉसिबल एंड इट कैन बी इंटेलिजेंट एंड दिस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दीज ऑल थिंग्स दीज आर द रिसर्च स्टडीज एंड ऑल दैट सो देन आई ऑल द डॉक्टर जब मैं डॉक्टर के पास गई थी देन सब लेके हम तो फार्मर्स नहीं है ना हमको क्या प्रॉब्लम है तो सर हम तो फार्मर्स नहीं है तो हमको क्या प्रॉब्लम है ये क्वेश्चन मुझे तो बहुत बार पूछ गया सो मेनी पीपल में जब यूज करते हैं वो वॉटर में वो जब वॉटर डायल्यूटेड इट इट गेट्स अडल्ट्रेटेड द होल वॉटर स्ट्रीम गेट्स अडल्टेड एंड द सेम थिंग द ड्रिंकिंग वॉटर your drinking of the same environmental factors which gets adulterated and then that's how it causes kidney damage and that's how i asked question ki hum farmer hai nahi hai jo bhi hai water to so connected hai na hum sab log we are connected with water one thing which connects all of us in the world is food and water if one thing which connects food and water to hum sabko sochna padega hum sabko iske bare mein dhyan dena padega अंदर की मन दीन गुरी आलोचे अवकाश इवाली मन दीन गुरी आलोचाल दिश वेर ई स्टार्ट से दट नो वी आल हेव रेस्पिटी वी हेव ईक्वल रेस्पिटी एज मच टू एजुकेट द फार्मर्स टू मेक अवेर फार्मर्स अवेर अबउट दिस वॉट इज हेपनिंग एंड वाई इट इज है कमिंग टू टूडे टापिक टूडे टापिक इज अ हर्बिस दिस इज नॉट अ पेस्ट सैट ई मीन टूडे टापिक एम श्योर pan india you know uh, pan network has done lots of lots of his work under glyphosate so as is now is there's another thing called glufosinate these are the brands glufosinate is a herbicide herbicide it is not a pesticide but it's a herbicide so first speaker achi chaala baaga chepparu the first speaker has spoken very well what is the difference between pesticide and a herbicide ee rendu theedale enti so what is the what is the difference between herbicide and pesticide so it is similar to glyphosate in elimating most green plants which is weed weed killer weed killer most green plants that have not been genetically modified so evaithe genetically modified avaledo jonsa ji ji is be genetically modified wo nahi hai usko kaatne ke liye usko usko kill karne ke liye ye uh, brand glufosinate ammonia uh, you know experiment ka wo jo chemical hai wo chemical hai so this is this kills all the non genetically modified uh, weed weed this thing so that is the experiment ka un logon ka batana hai ki you know you can kill the weed and the jo weed can be a weed killer so that is the whole experiment on that and then these are the brands so when when i when this topic was given to me uh, then i had to look into more this thing ki kya hai and then bsf is the is the one which is supplying this and then on their website i had to go and ask about their website ki kya hai uska website mein what is the published papers and what is the patent patent kya hai on what on what basis that it's been patented and why it has been done so what is the clinical trials jo bhi humko market chemical ya kuch bhi karne se usko market trial karna padta hai so uska website mein kya hai this is from their website uska niche aapka website hai agricultural bsf website ka un un logon ka bolna hai ki glufosinate ammonia has been religiously tested through lengthy trials for environmental safety for the past 30 years so hum logon ka bolna hai ye ki 30 years mein experiment kar chuka hai but when label instructions are followed and it is safe to use this is typically in the website you can go to the website and read it i've i've gone through the whole website and i've took it main points label instructions are followed and it is safe to use the herbicide is not significantly active in the soil and rapidly degenerated by microorganism in the soil my question is when there is no microorganism which is already killed how can this not be active in the soil this is for the for the people who are you know kind of understanding and who are environmentalist and who are research scientist this is my question to them when the microorganisms are killed by the whatever the other uh, pesticides then this is experiment is saying making water contaminated very unlikely that's what they are saying risk to birds bees aquatic organisms earthworms and other soil organisms is also very unlikely when the product is used according to the label instructions so i said okay let me look at what are the label instructions 
Okay, so I went into the whole thing, something label instructions. Now, label instructions, kya hai uska website mein? According to label instructions, according to the label instructions, according to the label instructions. So, the dosage stipulated is far lower than safety threshold. That's what the websites is saying. That is what it's been told. Training how to apply the product in line with the specific soil, weather conditions of the farm, to use the technological to reduce exposure. So this is what the website saying that product in line with the specific soil. Is anybody testing the soil? Do you really need this? Uh, new, 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 need this, or this is only needed in certain soil? Are these testing done according to the weather conditions? In India, do we need this? Do we have a specific soil that that this this is absolutely is needed? I'm asking all these questions to the research specialist and the, to the research scientist. Did we do it? Any soil analysis? Did we do any weather conditions? Were they exposed to such kind of a herbicide? What is the technological? You know what is what is the, why we using this? So furthermore, in the website it says less, far more lower than safety threshold or an average person would cut to consume more than two fifty apples in a single day in order to breach the toxic or toxicological safety threshold limited. So if the herbicide is used in an apple farm. In that apple farm, if that the dose is whatever that specific dose that they are using, and it is this thing, and if I eat the same apple, I have to use two fifty apples in the single day, so it is safe to use. And this is the studies have been published, and this has been the experiment has been done. So the government has agreed, saying that it is safe to use because we will not anyway use that. So this is what they, that is what has been published and marketed as. But it's our responsibility to see whether that publication and our market strategies and the use for our market is according is it using and as what they are protruding as you know the dosage form minimal to maximal dosage is what they are saying. So then I said, okay, what is the minimal dose that we can we can do it? They are experimenting this. What is the minimal dose and what are the studies that? Were? So that's why I say they are saying that this herbicide is safe under conditions of recommended use. So this is a recommended use and this is safe to use. So I said, okay, because of my health concern and our kind of physicians and our kind of doctors health concern is this. We have enough accumulated evidence suggests that environmental factors play an important role in some of the adverse effects being associated to potential role as an endocrine disruptors. We have accumulated evidence that environmental factors do play an endocrine disruptors as the other speakers have told. And in that, glufosinate is used extensively even though the herbicide may have severe side effects in humans, farm animals and beneficial insects. And we have accumulated evidence in the papers as well. And in the recent years, epidemiologically and experimental studies of both glyphosate and the glufosinate ammonium suggested that exposure to these genetically modified related modified related herbicide could be involved in wide range of adverse effects on cancer, reproduction, and development. So my my thing for glyphosate was kidney damage, and for this it is cancer. Reproduction development. So this is what we are talking today. Ye baat kar rahe ki cancer ke cheez ke liye ye konsa uh, you know konsa experiments hai, konsa studies hai. How much it is interlinked to cancer? How much of this dosage is interlinked to reproduction? And how much is into the development of the child? Because we are talking about women health and child health here. So how much is in terms of reproduction and how much is the development of the child? I am only talking on this and making it very very clear. So these are the websites. These are the papers. There are there are pros and cons. There are both into this. I'm not saying this is only that and this is only there is only side effects of the thing. There are some studies which fail to agree, but there are some studies which which agreed also. So we are in the both sections right now. So these are the this thing and these authors and these test papers that I took at they don't have any conflict of interest. So conflict of interest, then it's different. Conflict of interest means that I am promoting this product. I'm not promoting this. Product. I have nothing to do with this article. So these are the articles that I have shown that it has effect on human sperm mitochondria and then on genetically modified crops and pre and postnatal exposure in autism phenotypes in ma 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 mice, mice. 
This is the study paper. If you have to look at the study paper, this is a detailed study paper. I have looked at three, four studies in very, very extensively and dose also according to, according to that. So in conclusion of this paper, the documented, the GLA is, which is the, which is the glyphosate ammonia has harmful effects administered during highly sensitive pre and postnatal. Postnatal mitra pregnancy, pre, before pregnancy, during pregnancy and after pregnancy period. And there is a direct effect strikingly those observed in the animal models of autism spectrum disorders. So, jab tak to animal model mein proof ho chuka hai ki these behavioral alterations in those animal models showed a striking, striking resemblance to changes seen in the animal models. So animal models only tab tak hai, abhi tak to, that is the proof that we are looking at in health. Animal models mein, we have seen significant changes in autistic spectrum disorders. At the brain level, at the mother exposure to GLA caused increased relative brain weight of the offspring. In addition, reduced expression of two genes. So genes and genetical modification also it's causing an effect. Two gene implications in autism-like defects was observed in the brain GLA exposed pups at postnatal day 15. So while they are exposed in a pregnancy, before pregnancy and the sperm at a fertilization, pregnancy level and postnatal on day 15, we do have change in the brain weight and, and the expression of the brain. So our outcome through the data is interlinked between pre and postnatal exposure to the herbicide on the onset of autism-like systems symptoms later in life. It also raises fundamental concerns about the about the about the testing accessories risk of pesticide exposure for the critical period. So again, going back to the data about how much it was experimented, like what is that value that they took? Jo safe hai in before it is launching in the market. This is the milligram, this is the dosage, accepted daily intake. Jo cheese ke bar, like on what experiment that this has been in the market, then this has been in the market in the 90s. The patent was done in 2002 or before. So from 2002, this particular uh, chemical have, has been there. But the latest is the 2002 experiments have not have been done. Now 20 years we are down the line. So I'm sure it is in the 90s. They got the patent and they got the studies and they got that. So now we are in 2002 and we are 22. So I'm looking at from 2002 to down now. So 20 years down the line, what have what people have realized and what are the studies have been done at least from 2002 to 2022. So this is what we are talking about. So there was a paper in 2011, that is a paper I recommended here. According to the Environmental Protective Agency, they said two-year chronic feeding study is 2.1 milligram per kg per day. That it is okay. But 2014, there is another study, that is a study published, that they said no. They observed the, this is the point, which are this thing. Hope I, everybody can see this. Okay, just uh, somebody unmute and say you can see the slide. I'm just kind of, I don't know whether you, yeah, you can see the slide. So, so the slide so that the, I'm just uh, you have, uh, there's a time, uh, just 10 minutes more. Is yeah, yeah okay? fine, I'm done, I'm done. So the observed uh, harmful fine. effects is, harmful effects is one milligram per kg and three times a week. If you're exposed to one milligram per kg also, three times a week also, you are exposed to. So we have strong evidence to argue that this value which they published must be revised in their data also because we looked at the lowest data. So 0.42 point, so they said 2.1 2, 2 milligram. But 0.2 if you're exposed also, there is a side effect. So this is the health concerns here. And these are the health concerns. Now in concerns of health in production of reproduction, mitochondria. Everybody should know what is mitochondria. It is interfering at the mitochondrial level. That is why we are concerned as healthcare professionals. We need to be worried about this. Why? 
because this glufosinate is usually used as an ammonia salt and mito and interfering with something so called amino acid glutamine now this amino acid glutamine is responsible for the mitochondria in the sperm for its motility hyperactivation acrosomal reaction and fertilization and the amino acid biosynthetic pathways it is interfering glyphosinate is interfering with this pathway now we are from a health point of view this pathway that it is interfering is very very important for pathway for for brain for reproduction and for abnormal cells which can cause cancer this is the conclusion i don't want to talk in the detail on the medical this thing ye conclusion hai because scientifically it is affecting here and how, what this pathway is affecting at what in health this is what it is passive respiration active respiration so glyphosate is also including and they saying passive respiration also due to that it is interfering with respiration of the sperm that's why we see uh, in the kidney damage we are seeing lot of male fertility issues reproduction so far until then we only thought about female issues but for the past 20 years we are seeing it's a male issue also more than 30% now why did the male issue has come up because the sperm quality has significantly come down the sperm quality has significantly come down because of this cycle okay and this cycle overall lack of toxicity now the test that the dossier that the registration dossier which is there they they looked up overall toxicity of the body but they did not look at up embryo toxicity implantation toxicity they did not look at that so the epidemiological resulted there is like there is both toxicity at the embryo level not at the overall level but at the embryo level at the embryo level jab paida hone se pehle hi aur haani kar sakta hai because of the receptors because of the pathway agar paida hone se pehle se haani kar sakta hai to autism ka rate and jo other comorbidities uska haani you know can happen cancer reproduction and development so this is all about mitochondrial impairment this causes mainly on the dipolar impairment and do have a severe birth defects maternal exposure okay and uh, you know called nitric oxide production exposure and uh, neurotoxicity neurotoxicity is a major issue decrease alertness decrease response increase you know incidence of pain response and this is all the in the brain and the offsprings and all that that red wala jo cheese hai dilated renal pelvis and hydrouretal in the offspring so in the kidney damage as as less as, as this is that so these are the toxicity reports in 2019 this paper has been published call is optic nerve and injury eye ko bhi damage kar sakta directly or indirectly because the eye gets direct exposure to the to the toxic so optic nerve damage is a very huge thing so in the eye vision okay and this is what again it can settle it can not only other the bystander the insects have all the others can be damaged so we have enough proof in that i want to see we are checking ammonia levels for everybody who is causing severe neurotoxicity if they are coming with any kind of brain injury any kind of brain apathy we are checking everybody's ammonia levels in the hospitals in terms of kidney damage kidney liver tension liver function test liver damage kidney damage and brain damage ke liye ammonia testing karna padta hai if the ammonia is testing then this is the marker that we are saying potential markers of severe neurotoxicity so in recent years i want to conclude by saying we do have these proof enough we need more experimental studies but in animal experiments it has been proven so do we know do we, do we need any human studies for it that's a question to the panel that everybody is asking i'm done i'm dr sudha again thank you so much thank you dr sudha uh and now uh, i'd like to invite uh, dr narsimha devi uh, to release the report of the smith and money uh, and an overview and just give a small uh, overview on the whole report 
Uh, before that, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Reddy. Uh, Dr. Narasimha Reddy is a uh, public policy expert and has been a passionate campaigner on environmental and development issues. Uh, he was a board member of uh, iPhone Asia, member of the Cotton Advisory Group Committee and Advisory Council of Textile Exchange, a global non-profit organization. He has uh, contributed to public discourse and the policy changes in electricity, seed, rice, cotton, sugarcane, sericulture, handloom, and textiles, land, water, and other related areas. An intense team player, uh, he has served with campaigns, uh, advocacy programs, and uh, policy change projects. He's an author uh, writing on different subjects in regional, national, and international publications. He also guides students uh, on their PhD and other research activities. He has extensively worked on pesticide related issues such as poisoning, community health and policy over the last uh, 30 years. Uh, I'm really glad that I'm able to give you an introduction and please. Uh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, Sangeeta. I think uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned initially, uh, this <clears throat> webinar is being uh, organized in the context of a, a report we are releasing now and that's on uh, glufosinate ammonium <clears throat> which is a herbicide uh, and uh, this has come into limelight uh, recently because the indian government has uh, uh, given uh, you know uh, uh, permission for uh, gm mustard and this uh, trait uh, is supposedly uh, a herbicide tolerant, uh, basically glufosinate tolerant uh, trait. So the, that's how we uh, thought we look into this and see uh, what are its implications on health and uh, uh, you know various aspects of Indian agriculture. So uh, <clears throat> this is not a completely technical report. But you know, as we were looking into it, uh, we found that uh, there are many uh, concerns which uh, uh, come up uh, because of this uh, glufosinate ammonium. Basically, uh, if you look at the literature, uh, you know, everywhere you see that uh, this is being projected as a natural uh, uh, herbicide because uh, you know, long back in 1976. Uh, this was uh, uh, synthesized from soil bacteria. So uh, the soil bacteria, uh, uh, from that, uh, you know, they are trying to, uh, even now they are saying it is a natural herbicide, but it's not because uh, long back uh, it has become a synthetic uh, herbicide because uh, now they have uh, included a lot of other chemicals in that. Even though there is a phosphoglycine uh, involved in that, the, there is an isomer uh, from that uh, soil bacteria, but still uh, it is a synthetic uh, herbicide. It's not a, and it is organophosphate, organophosphorus uh, herbicide. So this uh, continuous, you know, push market is uh, that this is a very, safe and uh, very, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, alternative to glyphosate because glyphosate is now at a lot of uh, discussion and it is targeted because it has been declared a carcinogen. So, you know, the industry is uh, trying to push glufosinate uh, in the past four or five years in the US and uh, elsewhere and now India uh, as a you know, safer alternative. Uh, but, you know, this report uh, is going to show you that it is not safe. And as our previous speakers, you know, Dr. Sudha and uh, Roshni and Hira have uh, brought out, this is a serious reproductive toxin. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, Dr. Sudha mentioned also how it affects uh, mitochondria uh, through this uh, the main uh, pathway uh, this glufosidate ammonium works is uh, by inhibiting glutamine uh, so i think uh, how glutamine uh, interacts with the mitochondria and how 
mitochondria effects uh, reproduction uh, human reproduction i think uh, it's all there but uh, you know surprisingly uh, epa us epa uh, literature says uh, it is uh, still safer even though their own studies on mice uh, rats uh, show that uh, it is uh, still a, a major uh, concern i mean the toxicity of this uh, glufosinate ammonia uh and uh, you can see even who says it is a moderately hazardous so uh, you know the literature itself uh, a number of studies are there which show uh, there are serious uh, concerns and importantly in india you know uh, there is no antidote for this even though it's a organophosphate uh, there is no antidote uh, specific antidote if there is a poisoning uh you know a pesticide poisoning if at all it happens uh, there is no antidote uh, and uh, of course in india none of the farmers you know uh, or even farm workers agriculture workers they don't use uh, pest you know personal protection equipment so they have become uh, vulnerable uh, because of that and importantly uh, unlike other uh, pesticides or herbicides you know uh, usually uh, uh, spraying you know pesticide spraying is uh, recommended uh, uh, during uh, you know morning or evening so when it is cool because you know in tropical conditions in humid conditions uh, a lot of sweat is generated while the uh, worker is spraying so uh, usually uh, because because of sweating and the a uh, humid conditions uh, there is lot of exposure uh, uh, to uh, by the worker to the pesticide uh, which is being sprayed so usual recommendation is uh, for all uh, you know herbicides and pesticides uh, you do it only during cool cool time so they uh, usually do early in the mornings and uh, maybe in the evenings but not during the day time but glufosinate you know uh, ammonium this uh, uh, works the effectiveness of this glufosinate is maximum when there is uh, sunlight and a very intense sunlight that means they have to spray it during daytime that means between 10 to 5 when there is a, a lot of sunlight uh, so because it is uh, uh, photosensitive so this means you know this means if you want a glufosinate uh, uh, to be sprayed and if it has to be effective it has to be spread during daytime that means the workers agriculture workers sprayers are going to be affected exposed more uh, to uh, poisoning so it could be inhalational poisoning or uh, contact poisoning uh, you know depending on the conditions of uh, spray and uh, what happens you know, of course uh, poisoning symptoms are similar to uh, various other uh, pesticides and herbicides now uh, some of the you know when we look into why and how this herbicide is getting recommended uh, i think some of the features uh, we need to look into Uh, because uh, when we try to apply to indian conditions i think uh, we see how uh, it does not uh, uh, apply to indian conditions in many ways so one is you know uh, glufosinate you know it uh, has no residual control basically uh, they say uh, when uh, you know herbicides are sprayed uh, before the crop is uh, you know sowed so an empty land uh most of the herbicides are used as a pre emergence uh, uh, chemical to kill uh, any uh, weeds from emerging but then uh, uh, because glufosinate uh, they say it has no residential control that means it has to be applied multiple times so it has to be applied pre emergence and also post emergence but unlike you know glyphosate glyphosate and uh, some other like paraquat they are only used the pre emergence and uh, not post emergence so 
this uh, one way i think is uh, uh, opening a pathway for multiple uh, application of glucose net to get more effective uh, uh, you know killing of weeds so that means the cost is going to be higher glucosinate as it is is expensive than uh, uh, glyphosate and other uh, herbicides so if you are using it multiple times i think the small farmer marginal farmers in india i think they are going to be uh, you know burdened more uh, because of the cost and this uh, multiple uh, times it has to be used i am not sure uh, why uh, uh, indian uh, regulators are not looking into it uh and of course uh, uh in usa and uh, now you know because in usa and uh, many other parts of the world uh glucose net is being pushed as a alternative because there is a lot of glyphosate resistance among the weeds so uh, in order to reduce that resistance to glyphosate uh glucose net is being uh, recommended and uh, pushed as an alternative and in india uh, and of course asia south america in fact even mexico uh, they, they are now recommending a glucose net so it is now riding on this uh, you know as an alternative to glyphosate resistance and also as a uh you know co product uh, uh, of the genetically modified uh, you know corn uh, maize uh, I mean, more. and of course uh, uh, other canola and other uh, crops so the herbicide tolerance uh, the tolerant crops now are increasingly being uh, you know developed uh, as a glufosinate resistant crops so uh, i think uh, last year and before last year us has approved a lot of them and uh, now india has uh, done that so this is means uh, we are uh, looking at a, a double ride you know of a genetically modified seed and uh, along with that uh, herbicide is being pushed into the indian markets so uh, again uh, the implications on the business on the cost and the uh, production yield i think uh, they are also uh, very uh, debatable and i think we need to go into the details of that now <clears throat> coming to uh, the other features you know uh, glufosinate ammonium is a contact herbicide that means it will affect only when it is, gets into contact of a particular part of the plant so without a contact it does not affect i mean that's what uh, they are saying uh, unlike uh, you know glyphosate which is uh, more a systemic uh, herbicide so uh, so when spraying you know the recommendation is the droplet has to be from medium to be a little uh, bigger than a spray you know uh, but in india you know nowadays uh, uh, we are using taiwan uh, nozzles where it is a fine spray of small i uh, you know almost uh, uh, a very small uh, droplet and even aerial spraying i think uh, they are also uh, recommending so uh, but if you look at the glufosinate ammonium uh, feature what they are saying is it has to be a bigger droplet because it has to get into contact with the uh, you know plant part and mostly it is uh, the leaf you know so glufosinate ammonium again uh, it is effective only on the broad leaf uh, uh, grass weeds so some 80 species have been identified uh, uh, on which uh, this is uh, effective so uh, but uh, if that spray does not happen in that way i think again the effectiveness of uh, 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 glufosinate ammonium goes down and importantly i think uh, dr sudha was mentioning also but uh, here we can see how uh, you know it inhibits glutamine synthetase uh, which is enzyme uh, which plays a central role in nitrogen metabolism that means plants which take nitrogen uh, and the, the the those plants are affected directly 
because the blue phosphate ammonium uh, you know inhibits uh, that uh, particular enzyme which uh, uh, enables uh, nitrogen metabolism so that means again uh, i think uh, the nitrogen uh, and uh, soil and plant uh, cycle is also impacted uh, as uh, uh, blue phosphate uh, ammonium is uh, uh, used in india and uh, as i mentioned you know people thought uh, this is uh, very safe but already uh, you know there are uh, plants which have developed uh, resistance to blue phosphate ammonium you know so it's already uh, a palmer amaranth amaranth you know totakura and telugu uh, there are six uh, plants which have developed uh, resistance to uh, blue phosphate ammonium already and uh, they have been found in us new zealand uh, uh, mexico and uh, various other places so uh, it's not that uh, there is you know uh, the uh, you know blue phosphate ammonium uh, does not have resistance so we we have already seen that and uh, there are there are studies which are showing how uh, this resistance uh, can spread so uh, i have seen a paper where they say mention how uh, one of the uh, enzymes you know it can travel from uh, affected uh, uh, you know uh, the herbicide tolerant uh, uh, trait to uh, some other species uh, and they have uh, done that study so that means uh, if we are using the gm mustard which is a glufosinate uh, resistance uh, you know uh, this resistant uh, you know uh, that feature i think it could be bar or barnes whatever i think that can travel to another species and uh, it can uh, uh, develop resistance uh, because of that so i think this is a uh, uh, another significant uh, study i think we need to go into detail on how uh, this can happen so that means the resistance is uh, the biosafety of uh, uh, this uh, blue phosphate herbicide tolerant trait i think is again a, a question uh, which is uh, uh, coming up uh, in this uh, report <clears throat> Uh, uh and uh, it can be toxic to non target plants as well so uh, you know even if you are uh, spraying uh, uh, pre emergence or post emergence i think uh, it is go it can you know as the uh, there can be a drift of the uh, spray and it can uh, 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 be very toxic to non target plants that means the neighboring uh, farm or uh, neighboring uh, you know biodiverse uh, areas they can be affected uh, because of uh, uh, blue phosphate and uh, it can lead to death of that vegetation so necrotic uh, vegetation means uh, it can kill uh, you know non target plants as well so uh, i think uh, this is uh, this also means you know uh, we need to look at how spraying happens and if it is aerial spraying uh, i think uh, indian uh, biodiversity is also under threat uh, because of this uh, toxicity to non target plants and of course uh, epa us uh, environment protection agency uh, they have given uh, a clean chit uh, to <clears throat> glufosinate uh, in fact uh, as dr sudha mentioned the uh you know uh, 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 daily intake uh, levels and uh, you know dietary exposure uh, they said it is safe but uh, there are now studies which are showing that uh, uh, the, this is not true and as uh, studies on mice has shown that uh, it can cause a lot of problems but epa admits that uh, one of the pathways of uh, human exposure can be contamination of drinking water so that means you know uh, when uh, glufosinate usage uh, intensifies i think uh, as it contaminates the village uh, uh, water uh, uh, bodies i think uh, that is uh, going to be another route of uh, exposure uh, for women uh, 
and everyone else is dependent on that water. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, this, as I mentioned, uh, yeah, the other point is uh, uh, they say uh, glufosinate does not translocate. That means it does not uh, uh, move uh, within the plant from uh, one part to the other plant. Uh, but then there are studies which say it does not, and some play, some studies uh, they say it is uh, semi-translocating. So I think uh, still uh, research is going on. But uh, what happens to the plant, you know, that herbicide tolerant plant, on which uh, glufosinate is sprayed, and uh, how does it, uh, you know, react or uh, what kind of implications? On that plant, I think uh, not much uh, studies are available. But uh, so we need to see whether uh, that uh, uh, toxicity is going to impact on the yield, or uh, uh, you know, on the uh, whether the expression of that uh, you know uh, systemic uh, uh, toxicity, how and when it comes up, I think that's still an open question. <clears throat> Now in India, uh, we have seen uh, UPL uh, is the principal producer of glufosinate. Uh, they have uh, they have uh, you know established a few plants even seven years back. So I think somewhere uh, there is a, a import, uh, uh, there is international trade because you know uh, as the demand uh, for uh, glufosinate uh, is increasing across the world, especially in the US because they are trying to replace uh, glyphosate with uh, glufosinate. So uh, the largest producer is China and China itself is now, uh, because it has banned paraquat, so uh, it is using most of the glufosinate internally. So that means uh, there is uh, a large uh, demand uh, for glufosinate uh, for various reasons. So that's where India, Indian pesticide industry is uh, looking at, uh, uh, you know, to uh, benefit from this uh, demand supply gap, which is very huge. So somewhere I think uh, that is also uh, influencing the, uh, some of the decisions uh, which are happening around glufosinate. And of course, uh, BAS, BASF has, uh, acquired a uh, you know, liberty link system from their crop science. So now uh, BAS has become the biggest, uh, uh, topmost uh, Blue Force Net player. But uh, of course, Bayer is still there and uh, they have some of the patents uh, linked with uh, Blue Force Net. So uh, especially the trades, which are still uh, liberty link uh, trades, some of them are with Bayer science. Uh, so this, uh, I think, uh, this demand supply is going to again influence the uh, public policies around the world and especially in India. <clears throat> now, coming to uh, you know, uh, you can go through the report uh, which will be released uh, today, and we can share the link with uh, all of you. Uh, basically. Uh, this was banned in 29 countries. Glufosinate, even though uh, you know uh, they try to tell us that it is a safe uh, herbicide, it is already banned in 29 countries, especially across European Union. So in all the European member countries, it is banned, and also in Morocco and uh, UK. So I think that's a point which we need to remember. Uh, whenever we are uh, discussing the safety of uh, uh, glufosinate. And uh, as uh, we mentioned earlier, this is a neurotoxin and a reproductive toxin. So I think that we need to principally understand because in India, uh, you know, herbicide usage basically has a, a social implication. So one is it will, uh, you know, displace uh, uh, women uh, agriculture workers who are largely employed for uh, de-weeding uh, agriculture fields. Uh, as it is uh, because of uh, paraquat and glyphosate, they have lost uh, uh, some of the uh, you know, work access. So 
so there is loss of uh, working days for large number of uh, women workers so they can't find work uh, within the village because uh, the weeding and deweeding i think that's uh, one of the uh, important uh, uh, that's a critical uh, work uh, given to the women so that is going to be affected as we are now we see more uh, glufosinate uh, uh, tolerant uh, uh, crops are approved if at all uh, second uh, we are seeing in cotton areas you know in uh, central uh, india mostly and of course all over uh, india uh, you know the the the, the so called weeds which grow between cotton uh, uh, you know rows are actually they are leafy greens you know green vegetables and in fact uh, for uh, uh, decades uh, this women uh, workers who deweed them they take those uh, green uh, vegetables home in the evening cook them and eat so they, this means uh, their uh, their access to leafy uh, you know protein rich and nutrition rich food is also uh, lost uh, you know when uh, herbicide usage uh, is happening in india and third of course you know the toxicity which was mentioned by my uh, three uh, previous speakers so the impact on the women uh, is uh, you can see uh, socially uh, livelihood and also on their health and that is i think uh, a serious concern uh, which uh, we are trying to raise uh, uh, through this uh, report <clears throat> so uh, i i feel uh, we need uh, i request all of you to uh, you know go through this report in detail and uh, uh, maybe you can share your thoughts and uh, we want uh, more discussion to happen because uh, as uh, we brought out uh, uh, two reports earlier on glyphosate and this is the first uh, we are bringing out on glufosinate so where here we are trying to correlate uh, the toxicity with the social uh, conditions so we are, are trying to correlate uh, i think uh, maybe in the next uh, uh, publication we will look at how uh, the cost and the uh, you know agronomical uh, situation is also going to be influenced uh, uh, with the uh, glufosinate uh, if at all uh the you know the usage increases because we are already looking at paraquat and uh, uh the glyphosate so i think uh, glufosinate is going to be a focus of our uh, research and output uh, in the next uh, uh you know a few uh, uh months uh, so i'll stop here maybe we can uh, take some questions and uh, i always uh, request you to Uh, go through the report and give your comments because you know we it was uh, you know it, it appears to be a more raw effort uh, rather than a more uh, you know cogent effort and bringing this uh, report together so your comments uh, i think uh, we'll take because ultimately the goal is uh, you know we 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 cannot let uh, the indian uh, rural population uh, to be Uh, uh subjected to this kind of toxicity so i request all of you to be a uh, part of this effort thank you and uh, uh, we invite any questions uh, you may have on this thank you dr uh, so we do have some uh, questions in the chat box as well can you read them or uh, do you want them to read yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i can read them i can i can read them. can we wants to ask questions please raise your hands are you talking uh, to us uh, or yes by the time no no i'm talking to you <laughs> So, is there any study on people who are exposed to herbicides? Uh, that's why Pooja Ma. I 
And one more question is sir, is there any data about the percentage of agriculturists exposed to infiltrate helpless from herbicides or any other pesticides, insecticides? What about proven? Uh, are they more playable than glyphosate? Sometimes. So could you please, uh, I so. have this report. Okay, I have seen those and I think I responded. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, in this report, we have given a lot of references. So some of the studies uh, on the poisoning, uh, which has happened uh, elsewhere in Taiwan, uh, we could uh, give some uh, uh, reference uh, because uh, pesticide poisoning uh, by Glufosinate uh, has been, uh, I mean, we could not find much uh, literature except that uh, our colleague, you know, uh, Mariel has uh, done uh, a status report long back in 2008. Uh, she brought out a, a report and uh, she referred to some of the uh, pesticide poisoning cases. So those two reports have been uh, referred here. And uh, anyone wants to go into the detail of it, I think uh, I can share that or you can get access uh, uh, as well directly. But coming to India, I think, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, in terms of usage, you know, comparative usage, glufosne, we don't have actually particular uh, pesticide related uh, health studies. I have not... Uh, come across uh, many. We only Pan India has been looking at poisoning uh, uh, data and uh, there we have a lot of challenges in uh, uh, correlating the poisoning with the particular pesticide or herbicide. But of course there are cases, you know, like uh, uh, medical literature uh, from Burla in Orissa, they talk about uh, paraquat and I think some studies in Punjab have happened. Uh, but in terms of uh, the percentage of how many women workers are affected, I think that data is still uh, uh, not a, I don't think we get a all India figure, but National Crime Records Bureau, of course, you know, it mentions. And then uh, there is another uh, study, which was uh, done by Mariel uh, uh, last year, it was released, I think last year or before last year, which uh, looked at uh, the entire uh, you know, poisoning uh, literature and they came up with uh, uh, some uh, you know, assessment of the impacts. I think even that report uh, is there. Uh, there they look at India as well. Uh, so some of the data can be taken from there as well. But overall, uh, I think uh, straight away direct uh, correlational studies I have not uh, come across. Thank you so much, sir. Dilip, uh, you want to add? Yeah. Dilip? Uh, no, sir, I think you, you already explained uh, many things related to this. And data is, I think, data on the toxicity studies are generally available, which are based on animal models. Human studies are generally not allowed because of uh, ethical reasons, but uh, generally animal studies are available that uh, many studies are there. We also given some uh, link in, in, the, in our report as well. And also there are many reports in Pan India's website that actually uh, gave details on a couple of pesticides. Uh, and maybe if, uh, if interested, people can also go through the report, references, everything, they can get access to it. And one more thing, the the this, the report on glufosinate ammonium and overview, just released is available in our website. I just shared the web link in the chat box. Uh, please have a look at that. Thank you. Okay, Chitrangada, you have was... a question. Yeah. yeah. No, I just had a uh, like a follow up or just related to what you said uh, when you mentioned that we have a lot of challenges in relating uh, poisoning with the herbicides. So if you could speak a little bit, I think your colleague mentioned some of that. Uh, you could just explain a little more about what are the challenges that you know. 
uh, like your space uh, in trying to establish these causal links? Yeah, straight away, you know, we have seen uh, when a pesticide poisoned patient uh, reaches a health establishment, you know, uh, you know, uh, as per protocol, uh, there's no protocol actually. So when they are, uh, you know, uh, write uh, details of the inpatient, they should usually uh, write the uh, pesticide or whatever poison uh, which has led to this uh, the condition. So usually they just write uh, pesticide. They don't even write herbicide, you know, they just write pesticide. So it's not a pesticide, insecticide, fungicide, herbicide. So even that classification is done, not done. And then the specific name, you know, because uh, each uh, pesticide or uh, insecticide has its own uh, uh, chemical uh, structure. Uh, so, but when these, uh, you know, uh, villages, they come and, uh, you know, they pronounce it, sometimes, you know, these people can't pick it because uh, what is the local lingo of that, uh, uh, these people can't pick up. So, these are the challenges where, uh, so invariably when we try to look at the uh, data on poisoning, uh, this is the first big barrier, you know. How do we, okay, uh, what is that uh, this person was affected with, uh, whether it is herbicide, whether it is glyphosate or, uh, so we we had a lot of those problems. So in Yavatmal, we tried to uh, talk with the district administration and, uh, and then the uh, doctors, because doctors need to be uh, educated on uh, this as a very critical, uh, information because based on that only they can start the treatment because uh, you know if it is organ of phosphorus organ of chlorine or uh, is it an neonicotinoid and uh, whatever based on that they have to start the uh, you know uh, treatment uh, procedure and secondly uh, they need to know the antidote right so unless they know the name uh, under which that poisoning uh, has happened. Uh, so the, how do they start the uh, use the antidote? Now uh, we found that you know generally whoever comes for, with whatever poisoning, they are usually given atropine. So that's another uh, <laughs> problem. So everyone gets atropine as a and a regular antidote, but sometimes it can be uh, you know. Uh, it means a uh, wrong treatment. So like Paraquat, there's no antidote and uh, they should you be using active charcoal or uh, something else. So that means the delay in uh, uh, you know, uh, pro using appropriate uh, treatment, I think is also causing a lot of death. Uh, so these are the challenges. You know? So I, uh, we have seen in Warangal uh, long back in 2002, and uh, there are some studies in between, uh, as in a uh, uh, medical paper, which attributes, uh, you know, the percentage of poisoning to a particular uh, pesticide. We have that uh, paper, I can share that with you, but uh, I was uh, puzzled, how did they get that data? So, uh, but I could not, uh, uh, you know, talk to them. Maybe doctors or maybe, health researchers uh, get access to that data, but this is what I found. So what in Sri Lanka, they overcame this problem by, you know, they put up a big uh, chart on the wall with the uh, market uh, label and the photo. So whenever the patients come, they ask them uh, to show what they have used. So instead of carrying the bottle, uh, because it invariably it does not happen. So at least they can show uh, the wall. Uh, uh, so that means uh, the medical uh, uh, establishment in pesticide intensive usage areas where there is poisoning hotspots are there. They should have this kind of uh, you know alternative mechanism to identify. It. So there was one more question in the chat. 
as to how government agencies are recommending toxic pesticides. Again and again, MNCs are exploiting the whole to allow widespread content and say that we killing you. Dilip, you want to answer? Okay. <laughs> uh, Dilip, he is actually uh, looking into a registration process. So I it is more, uh, uh, there are two things, you know, one is registration, which is happening uh, uh, because of some company comes up with a product and uh, they come up with uh, bioefficacy data and they say this uh, pesticide or this chemical uh, has been developed to be used uh, for a particular crop or a particular uh, uh, purpose. Then the other process of uh, you know, recommendation by the agriculture universities or agriculture scientists, the entire uh, ICAR uh, establishment uh, is, uh, you know, earlier they were uh, together, I mean, 20, 25, 30 years back. But we are seeing that uh, they are now separate, you know, so both of them, uh, they don't have any communication in between. So the result is, you know, what we have seen uh, that uh, the registered pesticides for a particular purpose are not used for that purpose. So uh, we have seen monocrotophers, uh, which should not be used on crop, food crops, are used and recommended. You know, that's uh, the all the more uh, you know, concern is these agriculture scientists are recommending without reference to the registered uh, purpose of the pesticide. So we have seen even uh, endosulfan, which is banned in 2015, it continues to be uh, you know, uh, as listed as part of recommendation of various uh, agriculture universities. So we wrote to uh, you know, CIBRC, we wrote to Maharashtra government, and I wrote to one AP uh, Agriculture University Vice Chancellor. So except this Vice Chancellor, no one has responded. And this Vice Chancellor immediately, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, tasked their uh, 22 agriculture centers to, uh, to remove all those illegal uh, recommendations. So I'm saying illegal recommendations because uh, they are recommending without any reference to the uh, registration. So like glyphosate, you know, glyphosate is registered for uh, use on tea plantation and non-crop areas, but then uh, it is used all over India and everywhere. So the, and uh, there's a recommendation coming from agriculture scientists. I think that's uh, uh, all the more concern in addition to that. So this process of recommendation is uh, you know is a hidden process. I don't think it's a public process which is happening. Uh, so I think uh, the so now when we are seeing glufosinate getting recommended and not you know if you see the uh, in the GM mustard uh, permission letter they say uh, glufosinate can be used uh, and the at uh, the seed uh, production level, but the farmers should not use. So this is a, a place where again uh, GEAC is not the uh, you know regulator for pesticides, but yet you know it gives that recommendation. And CABRC should have given looked into it, but they are silent on that. So I think this is a, still a hazy uh, picture uh, uh, with regard to that recommendation. Can I add a couple of things, strategy? Yeah, sure. I think I missed the, the, your question because uh, there was a connectivity issue. Um, actually, re related to registration, we really don't know what is happening at the CIBRC level. We often uh, get minutes of their meetings and they say, uh, based on the request of these companies or X company or Y company, and based on the data they submitted, we find this um, uh, we conduct a scrutiny and find this effective, and we are doing this registration. This is happening. 
and adding to what dr seddi rotel reddy ji said on glufosinate uh, and also glyphosate uh, glyphosate is actually registered and approved for use in tea plantations only and it is not approved for other crops but we see wider use happening across the states for several crops and this is also been recommended by agriculture universities and institutions uh, so that is a illegal use and here in the case of glufosinate as well it is approved for weed control only in tea and cotton but uh, i think more than 10 or 12 uses uh, has been reported by a study conducted by indian uh, agriculture research institute so the indian council of agriculture research so uh, this is how uh, what is happening in india especially related to pesticide registration approval and recommendation always the recommendation and uh, recommendation given by agriculture universities and also by industry in their label plate are uh, not in harmony with the use registered for and there yeah. is also one category which is uh, uh, this is seen only in india deemed to be registered pesticides and uh, actually i think we do have uh, nearly 62 or uh, 65 pesticides registered in india comes in the category of deemed to be registered pesticides for which uh, a thorough scrutiny has not been done on efficacy and on its adver- adverse effect as well so this is happening yeah i think uh, this report uh, we mentioned this uh, there is this uh, indian council for agriculture research study done in 2016 and that report uh, mentions clearly that glufosinate is being used elsewhere than uh, than uh, for the registered purpose and it has listed you know 2016 and still they themselves uh, they have not taken action on that so you can see that in the report uh, with details so any more questions sorry ah uh, yeah let's conclude uh, i think uh, there are uh, people uh, from you know <clears throat> both the telugu states they in fact they are working on uh, agriculture uh, labor issue so i'll just briefly uh, speak in telugu uh, and of course hindi i can't be so articulate because i do i know hindi i can't uh, use this uh, technical jargon in hindi i the telugu lo cheptan amma ipudu daaku nalugoru maatladnaru ఈ కొత్తగా మనము ఆవాల పంటను జన్యు మార్పిడి ఆవాల పంటకు కేంద్ర ప్రభుత్వం అనుమతి ఇచ్చింది ఆ అనుమతిలో భాగంగా ఈ గ్లూఫోసినేట్ అనే ఒక కలుపు మందు ఉపయోగించవచ్చు అనేది ఆ అనుమతిలో భాగంగా వస్తుంది అయితే గ్లూఫోసినేట్ కలుపు మందు ఇప్పటికే వాడుతున్నారు దేశంలో ప్రపంచవ్యాప్తంగా అయితే ఇది ఇది పెద్ద దీని వలన ప్రమాదం ఉండదు ఇది కొంత బాగానే ఉంటుంది అనే విధమైన ఒక సంకేతము మనకు పరిశ్రమ నుంచి ప్రభుత్వం నుంచి వస్తుంది కానీ ఇది చాలా ప్రమాదకరమైన రసాయనము దీని వలన పుట్టబోయే బిడ్డల మీద అంటే పునరుత్పత్తి వ్యవస్థ మీద దీని యొక్క దుష్ప్రభావం తీవ్రంగా ఉంటుంది ఇది మా యొక్క అమ్మాయిలు ఇద్దరు చెప్పినట్టు పుట్టబోయే బిడ్డ మీద పుట్టబోయే ఒక ముందే ఆ మహిళ ద్వారా ఆ పుట్టిన బిడ్డ మీద తర్వాత గర్భంలో గర్భ గర్భంలో ఉన్నప్పుడు కూడా ఆ బిడ్డను కాపాడే ఆ చుట్టూ ఉండే పొరలు ఏవైతే ఉంటాయో వాటిని అధికమించి లోపలికి వెళ్ళే దీనికి ఆ గుణం ఉంది కాబట్టి ఇట్లా అనేక విధాలుగా పునరుత్పత్తి మీద అంటే మగవాళ్ళ మీద మహిళల మీద దీని యొక్క దుష్ప్రభావం ఉంటుంది దీనివలన అనేక రకాల రోగాలు ఆ సమస్యలు రావచ్చు ఇది క్యాన్సర్ కారకం కాదు అంటారు కానీ క్యాన్సర్ పక్కన పెడితే దీనివలన 
అసలు మన సంతతి మీదనే ఆ దుష్ప్రభావం ఉండే అవకాశం ఉంది ఇది కలుపు మందు అంటున్నారు కాబట్టి మన మహిళలు ఎవరైతే ఉన్నారో మహిళలు ఆ గడ్డి కానీ మొక్కలు అది మన కలుపు మొక్కలు తీయడానికి వెళ్ళినప్పుడు వాళ్ళకి ఇది దీని వలన వాళ్ళు పని కోల్పోతున్నారు రెండోది ఆ మనం ఏదైతే కలుపు అంటున్నామో అది మనకు ఆహారం కాబట్టి అది మనకు ఆకుకూరలుగా వాడి తింటారు అంటే అది కూడా కోల్పోతున్నారు తర్వాత ఇది అక్కడ ఆ వ్యవసాయంలో పొలాల్లో దీన్ని ఉపయోగం వల్ల వాళ్ళ యొక్క ఆరోగ్యం మీద కూడా వాళ్ళ శరీరం మీద కూడా దీని దుష్ప్రభావం ఉంటుంది అందుకే ఈ ఈ గ్లూఫోసినేట్ అనేది ప్రమాదకరమైన రసాయనము దీన్ని అనుమతి ఇవ్వద్దు దీని వలన పని పోతుంది ఆరోగ్యం చెడిపోతుంది తర్వాత ఆహారం కూడా అందే అకపోయే పరిస్థితి ఉంది అని మేము ఈ సందర్భంగా ఈ రిపోర్ట్ ఒక నివేదిక కూడా విడుదల చేస్తున్నాం ఆ నివేదికలో చాలా వివరాలు ఉన్నాయి కాకపోతే అది ఇంగ్లీష్లో ఉంది బహుశా ముందు ముందు తెలుగులో కూడా తీసుకొస్తే ప్రయత్నం చేస్తాం ఇది ఈరోజు చర్చ సారాంశం ఓకే ఐ థింక్ వీ కెన్ క్లోజ్ ఇఫ్ దర్ ఈస్ ఎనిథింగ్ సంగీత thank you uh, thank you so much sir uh, and uh, thank you all the participants who joined the webinar and thank you dr sankhya uh, dr biji uh, sorry dr sudha i'm really sorry uh, dr sudha um, dr biji uh, roshni and uh, heera for the presentations and uh, uh, thank you all for uh, being a part of this webinar and please go through the report and give your suggestions they are available in our website we are issuing a press release i think uh, that will be shared uh, with all of you uh, so journalists who are here i request them to uh, also uh, you know take uh, you, i mean we'll copy uh, that uh, to you thank you thank you so much thank you dr sudha thank you thank you dr thank you bye bye thank you all bye